Can I see a show of hands? How many people have heard of or used the Chrome UX report before? That is great to see. That's about maybe 20% of the room. My name is Rick Viscomi. I am a developer programs engineer at Google. I've been in this role for about a year and a half. Um, my primary role as a DPE is working on web transparency. That means that I work on tools like the HTTP Archive and Chrome User Experience Report to enable developers, both within Google and externally, to understand the state of the web. Prior to this role, I worked at YouTube as a web developer, and I helped make YouTube fast. I worked on their web performance team. Uh, it's been a great experience to go from working on web performance of one of the most popular websites, a very large website, to now trying to speed up the entire web as I transition to this role at Google. I'm also the co-author of the web performance book, Using Web Page Test. Happy to answer any questions you may have about synthetic web page test testing or real user testing with Chrome UX report. So let's start with a broad question. How do we measure the state of the web? This question is especially important because it digs at our desire to improve the web and make it faster. And that's what this conference is all about, right? We love speed, we love performance, and we want the web to be fast. Whichever tool we use to answer this question, it needs to objectively measure how good or bad the user experience of the web is. It also needs to be representative of the, di of the diverse content on the web. There are many different types of websites. There are many different types of users on the web. So this question is important because once we have a tool that can measure the state of the web, we can start to answer some interesting questions. How fast is the web? And is it actually getting faster as a result of our work? So it, I've watched some of the presentations today and I've noticed different techniques being discussed to improve the state of performance and different tools being discussed to see if your website is improving performance. But how do we know in aggregate, not just for a particular website, are websites actually adopting these techniques? Is there uh, difficulty in understanding how to improve performance? And do we know how fast the web actually is? Do we have a number that represents the state of the web or web performance? And this has to do with the feedback loop of the optimization process, the same as we would do for one single website. First, we have to measure it, then we have to optimize it, and then we have to monitor it and ensure that we are staying fast. So this is where the Chrome UX report, also abbreviated as CRUX, comes in. The Chrome UX report measures the state of real user measurement on the web, the state of real user experiences. And here's what the data pipeline looks like. The Chrome browser collects quantitative metrics about the performance of the user experience. We'll see some of, the, some of these metrics in the next slide. For example, the paint metrics, the loading metrics. It also collects qualitative metrics about the user's experiences. The device they're using, their effective connection speed, and also their physical geography. Google processes the data and omits anything that, that does not meet our privacy standards. So if a website does not want to be indexed by Google in the search results, then we omit this from the results. Finally, the data is made available for analysis on several tools. BigQuery, PageSpeed Insights. We've also recently released a dashboard on Data Studio and also some exciting third-party integrations. So the metrics collected by the tool, there are only five of them right now. First paint, first content full paint, DOM content loaded, on load, and first input delay. The first four metrics were originally released last year. The data set is about one year old. These are metrics that measure the page loading experience. Metrics like DOM content loaded and on load might not actually influence the user's experience. 
These are metrics that have been around for a very long time, and we may be used to referring to them as the page load metrics, but this data set and this report is focused on the user experience. A user might not notice or even care when DOM content loaded happened. It might not represent the useful information on the screen. Same with onload. Um, onload waits for all of the images to load on the page, but if those are below the fold, a user might perceive it to be ready before that time. So FCP is really the preferred loading metric. Recently, we added first input delay, or FID, to the data set, and this is currently available as an experimental metric. Uh, we're experimenting with it in the Chrome browser. It's available now as an origin trial, uh, and you can use the Chrome UX report to see the state of first input delay on the web. Um, the difference between this metric and other metrics is that it's measuring interactivity. It's the time from a user first attempting to interact with the site, clicking a button, or maybe um, trying to type into an input box, from that time until the time that the page actually responds to it. We would hope that this time is, let's say, less than 100 milliseconds, uh, the time that a user will perceive it to feel as instantaneous. Uh, but you would be surprised with how long the long tail of this distribution is on the web. So that's an, a brief introduction to the tool. How do we start getting insights out of the data set? I mentioned that there are three tools that Google maintains to help you get access to the data. The first is BigQuery. It's a queryable database on the Google Cloud platform. We also have PageSpeed Insights. You may be familiar with this. You can enter a URL, and PageSpeed Insights will tell you prescriptive information about how to improve performance. It might suggest optimizing images or compressing content. And finally, we have Data Studio. This is a recent addition, and it's a custom dashboard of a website's performance over time. So let's dive in and see how to use each tool. The BigQuery data set is updated monthly. In fact, today we released the September data set. In it, there is histogram data for over 4 million unique origins. Obviously, there are way more than 4 million websites on the web, so your particular websites may not be in this report. Querying the database is free, up to one terabyte per month. Uh, that should cover most use cases. I mentioned that there are 4 million origins, so the first thing you're probably wondering is, is my website in this report? So one of the simplest queries we can write is to check um, if uh, the origin in the data set match a given domain. So on line four, we're querying the Chrome UX report BigQuery project, the all data set, meaning that it covers all countries, and 2018-08, so this is actually the August 2018 table. The query overall is saying, give me all of the unique origins whose domain is example.com. And we can see that there are four origins for example.com. There are some with HTTPS, HTTP, www subdomain, and no subdomain at all. So it looks like there's one website, but it's actually used four different ways by users. It's actually very important if you're going to query this data set to use the correct origin. The canonical origin, if I were to type this into the browser, there may be some redirects. So we want to focus on that canonical final URL. OK, so let's do something useful with this data set. Uh, I mentioned that it's all histograms under the hood. This query gets and visualizes the underlying histogram data. It's only 12 lines of SQL, so it's not too scary. Each bin in the histogram has a start time, an end time, and a density value. We don't expose the absolute count of uh, user experiences for each bucket or bin size, just the relative percentage. You'll notice that uh, on line three, we're summing up all of the densities. This is because the data is segmented by the dimensions or qualitative metrics I mentioned earlier. So you might be able to see, in particular, what is the cumulative density of users on 4G on mobile phones. 
this query just aggregates everything, all of the user experiences for this origin. So a histogram might be a little difficult to understand just by looking at it at a glance. Uh, one thing that I found is helpful is to break it down into three buckets of performance, three different types of speed. We have fast, average, and slow. So going back to our earlier question, is the web fast? First, we have to define what fast is. Um, here, we're querying first content full paint. So let's define fast FCP to be one second or less. Users will definitely notice a one second delay in FCP, but it's still quick enough to not cause too much of a disruption. So the results of this query show that users on example.com experience a fast FCP about 43% of the time. So if you look at where the 50th percentile is, that falls in the yellow average bucket. So we can say that the median experience is average on this site. So we're getting into a little bit more complex querying now. Um, this is a very similar query. It just goes over all of the monthly data sets so we can see how the performance has changed over time. And here's what that looks like when we plot that. Uh, for this particular website, it's very interesting. It, it used to be in the 80s, fast FCP, and recently it, the performance of this website tanked pretty bad. Um, so it's, it's very interesting that you can see how actual users have perceived their performance on this website. And the, the amazing thing is that we don't control this website. We don't have a RUM solution, uh, a piece of JavaScript collect, collecting these user experiences. We don't control that, but because users in the Chrome browser are having their performance aggregated, we do have access to this. So you can imagine there are some pretty interesting uh, types of analysis that you can do with this data set. I will get into that a little bit later uh, in the advanced use cases. Let's move on to PageSpeed Insights. As I mentioned, it analyzes a page and gives you optimization suggestions. We've recently also added crux data here so you can see how fast users experience that page. It's available as both a web interface and also an API, which is free to use. To use it, all you do is search for a web page. And in this case, example.com is the home page of this website. It's not the entire origin as opposed to the BigQuery data set. It has a fast designation here where FCP is 0 0.7 seconds. I believe that's the median. It shows the distributions for both FCP and DOM content loaded. And it's showing the charts similar to what we generated in BigQuery. There are some differences here. Um, this uses a rolling 30-day aggregation window. So from the date that we look it up on PageSpeed Insights, all the way back 30 days. Again, the BigQuery data set was just the calendar month, for example, August or September. If we want to emulate the BigQuery data, we could prefix it with origin here. And this will, you'll notice uh, optimization suggestions are unavailable uh, because we can't suggest optimizations for many web pages, just one at a time. But you can still get this uh, performance or speed data. You might see unavailable speed data when an origin or crux data for a particular web page is not available. This is okay. Like I mentioned, not all websites or web pages are supported in the crux data set. But it's very useful to recognize this so that if, when you're exploring your websites, you can see whether or not the, the website is included in the report. You can save some time if you're writing queries lower level um, because querying does incur uh, a cost against a quota, you can test it here for free. It's a quick and easy way to see if a website is included before you go and write your query. The third tool that we're going to look at is Data Studio. It enables you to generate a custom dashboard based on the Chrome UX report data. It includes historical charts of the page performance and also the qualitative metrics like device and connection type. 
You can share it or embed it just as easily as a Google Doc, and it's also free to use. So this also looks familiar from what we generated on BigQuery. The Crux dashboard is just a simplified version of a BigQuery interface. It's still SQL under the hood, but you don't have to write any SQL to generate charts like this. You just plug in your origin, and it will generate a dashboard for you. Right now, it's just FCP. Uh, we're adding support for all of the other four metrics, including first input delay, very soon. And this is very interesting and, and useful as well. So you can see the distribution of devices over time. 82%, I believe this was developers.google.com, 82% of users on that origin are on their phone. And the connection distribution is also pretty telling. You can see most of them were on 4G. I also want to point out that when you're running your synthetic tests, this type of data is still very useful because you can use this to calibrate your synthetic tests. If you're using web page tests, the defaults might not represent or be realistic for what your users are actually experiencing. So if I were to set up a synthetic test on web page test of this origin, I would be sure to test it under 4G conditions because that would be more realistic for Chrome users. You'll notice that uh, we also go all the way down to 2G and slow 2G, and even offline experiences are counted. Uh, but those have very, very small percentages. So I want to leave you with some ad advanced examples to provide some inspiration, maybe, for interesting analysis you can do yourselves. So we looked at how fast is a particular origin? Let's try to answer the questions, how fast is the web, and is it getting faster? We can aggregate the data for all origins and get a kind of average performance across the web. It's not weighted by site popularity, but this is an approximation. It's good enough for now. We can see that less than 40% of FCP experiences qualify as fast. So we still have a long way to go. Uh, and we can see that that number is fluctuating. It's not really going up or down overall. Again, this is just a few months of data. It's about nine months in total. We can monitor this trend each month to see how the health of the web is changing. I also mentioned geography in the data set as well. We can analyze performance within a specific country. Here, we're comparing how Google performs in France on .com and .fr TLDs. And it turns out that users experience more fast FCPs on .fr, for whatever that's worth. There are 238 country-specific data sets, in addition to the one all data set that aggregates the data globally. We can write a query over all countries to see how the experience, in this case of Google.com, varies. So you can see that this query has about 256 lines of SQL. It's very large. Um, I provide uh, what I call a cookbook of recipes, pre-made SQL queries that you could just copy and paste, change out the origins to your specific use cases. Um, in this case, I do the hard work of selecting the country code and country name from each of the country data sets and unioning them all, them all together. And the results are pretty interesting. We can see how the performance varies by geography. And imagine doing this for your own websites or your competitors' websites even. Uh, maybe not so surprising, performance in countries in Africa perform uh, pretty poorly. Uh, Europe and North America have high performance. I mentioned the HTTP archive earlier. It's another web transparency data set that I help manage. As of July 2018, we're crawling over 1 million URLs from the Chrome user experience report. So the HTTP archive tracks how the web is built, contrasted with the Chrome user experience report, which tracks how fast the user experiences are. 
and we can intersect these data sets in really interesting ways. Here, we're getting the aggregate performance distributions for all websites that are, that are identified as using a CMS. Uh, CMSs are identified using the Wappalyzer tool. So we look at specific signatures on the web page in the HTML or the HTTP headers, and we say, this looks like it's using WordPress, or this looks like it's using Drupal. When we intersect that with the performance data in Chrome UX report, you can see which CMSs perform faster than others. So I went to both a WordPress and Drupal conference recently, and I showed them this data set, and there's pride among the community to be faster than your competition. It's very interesting to see this. Uh, Typo3 was very happy that they were among the fastest. Um, at the other end, Wix was kind of unhappy to be called out as uh, having few fast experiences. But this is the beauty of web transparency data. We can look at everybody using the same objective metrics and benchmark them against each other and see how everyone performs. This data is not meant to shame anyone. It's meant to illuminate the performance on the web. There are over a thousand different technologies in Wappalyzer that we have access to in HTTP Archive. So you can imagine running a similar query for any of these other technologies and getting similar results. PageSpeed Insights also has an API, as I mentioned. We can send it a request for a particular URL and get back the percent of fast FCP experiences. And here it's showing that example.com has a fast FCP about 80% of the time. I guess that means that big drop in performance was fixed recently. I mentioned it was a 30-day rolling window. So if you want to see the performance in the past, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do that on the web interface. But we can use Google Sheets and Apps Script to send requests to this API every day and record those performance metrics in a spreadsheet. It's kind of a low-tech way to monitor, but it's still pretty interesting. You can get page-level performance data over time. And here I'm not just doing one origin or one web page. I'm doing two competing web pages. Uh, the documentation for developers on Google and the documentation on Mozilla. It actually shows that Mozilla has a higher density of fast user experiences. Um, that's compelling data for us at Google so that we can become faster. Um, when we plot it over time, they're actually converging, if you squint closely enough. Uh, Mozilla's performance is declining just a little bit. Google's is in improving. Again, imagine doing this for your website, five of your competitors. Developers are making competitive analysis dashboards using Data Studio. I showed that you can see your FCP distributions over time. You can also customize this dashboard to include the same performance data for several of your competitors. A few of the people very recently have been uh, taking note of that feature and generating their own competitive dashboards. I think this is a really great motivator for non-technical business stakeholders. Nobody wants to be slower than their competition. Um, it's one thing if I tell you, your website is fast 40% of the time. But if I tell you that your competitor is fast 60% of the time, then somebody's going to say, let's get fast 60% of the time. Let's be more like them. Or I don't want to be slower than my competitor. Akamai has a RUM product called Mpulse. And Paul Calvano, a senior engineer at Akamai, wrote a blog post. In it, he notes that RUM is conventionally a first party experience. And site owners have been limited to seeing only the user experience data for their own website. But Crux enables competitive analysis in RUM tools. He goes on to say that Akamai is actively working on integrating data from the Chrome UX report into Mpulse. So this is really exciting that we can see in existing RUM tools how your performance compares against 
competitors. Okay, so what did we learn today? The Chrome UX report can tell us a lot about the performance of the web, and not only the web as a whole, but individual websites, websites competitors, groups of websites, group by technology. There are several tools available for all levels of expertise. You don't need to be an expert in SQL to get the data. Uh, you don't need to have budget for many terabytes of data to do expensive analysis. If you want summary data quickly and easily, there are tools like PageSpeed Insights and Data Studio where you can do that. And if you want to do data mining at a lower level, BigQuery does give you that flexibility. The tooling support is getting much better, and you can do a lot, of it, a lot with it out of the box. With the raw data, you can query and intersect it in very interesting and powerful ways. And more and more people are integrating the data with their own tools and enhancing the value. Here's the one pager if you want to take a, a photo, um, some links to the documentation and the tools that I mentioned. Thank you very much. Is there any question for Rick?